Protests marking the weekend in Cuba. Thousands flooding the streets of Havana, calling for liberty, a better economy, and an end to rampant power blackouts. Meantime, Cuban Americans in Miami are also hitting the streets. Here's the scene right now in Little Havana as they call for an end of more than 70 years of communism on the island. Could it be the time? Our guest now, Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, certainly hopes so. Mayor, thank you for joining us. We appreciate the time. When you see that video that we just showed there of these protesters and the scale of it, your perspective is very important here, and I want to get this. What is the significance of this to you, Mayor? It's historic. Uh, we hope that this is the moment where communism in Cuba falls because it can have not only a liberating impact for the Cuban people, which, of course, is incredibly important, but it could free up uh, people throughout the hemisphere who are underneath the control of communist governments in Nicaragua and in Venezuela, tens of millions of people. So, I mean, this is an incredible moment. I think the Cuban government was caught completely by surprise. Uh, they immediately did what they normally do, which is they shut off the Internet. Um, and then they started uh, going out in the streets and, and beating the protesters and trying to use their repression apparatus uh, to keep people who were risking their lives, like the ones that you see out there, uh, yelling and, and calling for freedom and liberty. Is it troubling that we're not seeing more of this, which might lead many to believe that these crackdowns are working and there aren't as many people on the street? I mean, think about this. Part of why it is so unusual is that this would have never happened, correct me if I'm wrong, under, under the Castro regime. They would have quashed this quickly. Well, it only happened once in 1994 in a very small part of Havana. This happened in 24 different cities. And what's, what's scary about it and what you see in, in these videos is that they're throwing rocks and they have you know, sticks and they're, and they're competing against uh, police officers with guns and bayonets and, you know, and professional uh, equipment. So it, it's, it's really unfair for the Cuban people who are being completely abused by, uh, by the police and by the military. And unfortunately, what happens in circumstances like this is it requires the military to make a decision uh, to, to choose on behalf of the people of the country and to do right by history as opposed to what they think may be in their best personal interest. Do you think we're at that point, Mayor? Have you heard anything about that? Unfortunately, I haven't heard any reports that are, you know, confirmable. Uh, I really hope that we do get to that point. I really hope that we that this is something like we saw in Berlin, uh, like we saw, you know, in the, in the former Soviet Union. Uh, you know, you want it to be some sort of a rapid, peaceful disintegration of government and transition into a, a democracy. Um, but, you know, but you wonder whether this is going to be something, uh, another example of, of repression uh, uh, winning the day or like what's happened in Venezuela, where you had an interim government recognized by the international community that couldn't take power. Let's talk more about that, because I read a quote from you where you said you were talking about an international intervention. And I also saw on your Twitter feed where you said this is the moment for freedom in Cuba. It cannot wait any longer. How would that look? You say led by the U.S. I'm having a hard time sort of picturing how this would look without an invasion. You say there's a possibility of doing it rapidly and peacefully. How might this play out? You know, first of all, you have to get the international community on board. Uh, the communist uh, regime in Cuba has done a wonderful job of trying to mask what's going on and blame the United States for everything wrong that's happening here. We see with these images very, very clearly and through social media uh, what they're doing to their own people and that their own people are the ones that are seeking liberty and justice. The international community has to do something. There's uh, food shortages, there's medicine shortages, and frankly, the people want freedom. Uh, you know, there have been many examples in history where, where coalition of countries have gone in and done a variety of interventions that have been successful in creating a democracy uh, in the absence of some of the examples that I gave you where it happened naturally. So if it were to start now, what would the U.S.'s role be in this? Because, as, as you know, the longer we wait and get on the other side of this, a week from now, a month from now, this, uh, this is a memory. Oh, remember the uprising. Absolutely. And that, that's something that can happen. And that's something that, that's right. I think, you know, actions have to be taken. And it's going to take the United States and, and a coalition of countries to have the courage to do what's right. Uh, we saw, you know, President uh, Bush uh, basically take out Manuel Noriega in Panama and install. Uh, there were there were democratic elections after that. And and, and, and the, the, the country of Panama is thriving economically. It's been a democracy ever since. And they haven't had a strongman dictator uh, since that moment. It was something that uh, change the destiny of that country. 
What's happening on your streets in Miami there, and, and how does that impact what's happening in Cuba? I, I was struck by something our reporter on the scene in Little Havana there said, Brian Enton, about how, I don't think he's exaggerating either, but there are thousands of people who are literally ready to go and fight now. He's not exaggerating. I can tell you that, you know, when Fidel Castro passed away, I think it was sort of the, the last thing that the prior generation, uh, to me, um, was sort of hoping for um, and hoping that that would, uh, you know, uh, create change. This is a spontaneous uprising of the Cuban people. And the people that were that are protesting in Miami are young people that are recent arrivals from Cuba. So they're people that are very connected to the Cuban island. They have family members that are there. They're seeing their family members and, they, and they're hearing from their family members as they're being uh, uh, tortured, as they're being hit and as they're being beaten. And so they want to get involved and, and, and feel hopeless. Do the people in Cuba, Mayor, have a chance? Uh, do you think they can survive this? Will this uprising continue, or do you think the government will put it down? I think the government's going to do everything they can to put it down because they have absolutely, they were not expecting this. I think they were caught off guard. I think the images and the time it took them to react um, is evidence of that because they were afraid that if they reacted, that the images that we're seeing was what the international community was seeing. And they were hoping that somehow the United States, that they could blame this whole thing on the United States, which is precisely what they tried to do. That's like their, that's their playbook. Um, my hope is that either, uh, you know, internal dissension uh, creates a change or something from the outside, uh, you know, makes this moment a real moment. Can you envision democracy there in Cuba? Absolutely. The people of Cuba deserve it. The people of Cuba have been yearning for it. And, and they understand that, uh, to have a true democracy uh, in Cuba, it will it will create a tremendous amount of prosperity for them and for their families and for their future. And I've always said that what communism has done, the worst thing that it's done, aside from all the people that it's killed, is that it's robbed people's hope. If you have no hope in a better tomorrow, then you have no reason to live. And if you don't have any reason to live, that's why you see people uh, putting their lives at risk in the streets uh, of Cuba uh, to protest the government and what it's doing to them. Well, I think you could see that on a lot of the faces of the protesters there in Cuba. Hope, also no anger, frustration, desperation, all of it. We'll continue to keep an eye on this. Mayor Francis Suarez, I know you're very busy down there in Miami. We appreciate you taking some time for us tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate it as well.